The Controversial Rise of America's Royal Family. The book claims that, quote, multiple sources told him that the former Olympian had been miserable for months and has now considered transitioning back to being a man. According to Halperin, quote, one source confirmed to me, Caitlin has made whispers of sex change regret, hinting she might go back to being Bruce Jenner. Jenner, says Halperin, could, quote, unquote, detransition, which would be admitting he's a man, within the next couple of years. So this means there are two possible Caitlyn Jenner stories. Story one, a mentally ill man thought he was a woman, was reinforced in this perspective by a perverse, sick media and a pathetic medical establishment, urging him to overrule his own second thoughts, underwent surgery and hormone therapy, realized surgery and hormone therapy don't cure mental illness, now regrets his suffering and is finally considering detransitioning. Story number two, a man magically became a woman. The woman now magically wants to become a man. You get to pick. Pick one of those stories. Those are the only two stories. The Department of Justice says Americans should be forced to embrace story number two. Instead of recognizing the reality of mental illness and media exploitation, we'll all be told to repeat story number two until it becomes second nature. Or we'll be called bigots and have our businesses and our states boycotted, or we'll be fined by the government. The reality of sex and the reality of mental illness, these have to be memory hold, just gotten rid of. Those who suffer from mental illness must believe, we, we, have, to, we have to drive them to believe fictions about their own sex, and, and we must be forced to embrace their mental illness as reality. So here are three truths that could have stopped this charade if society actually cared about truth. Truth number one, suicide rates among transgenders do not decrease thanks to sex change surgery. Suicide rates among transgender don't drop after surgery. 41% of transgender people attempt suicide sometime in their life. That's compared to 4.6% of the general population. Okay, it's 10 times higher. The suicide rate among transgender people who say they are never identified as transgender is 46%. Okay, that's people who are not being harassed because nobody can identify them as transgender. 45% of transgender people who undergo hormone therapy attempt suicide. That's higher than the general transgender suicide rate. And by the way, really, really high comorbidity between transgenderism and depression and suicidality generally. Number two, most children who are supposedly transgender grow out of these feelings. Dr. Paul McHugh is a former head of psychiatry at Johns Hopkins University. He finds 70 to 80% of all children with transgender feelings grow out of it. This is important because the media have already told parents that children confused about their sex should consider whether they're transgender. Truth number three, transgender regret is a very real thing. Walt Heyer is a man who underwent sex change surgery and then regretted it, and he wrote at The Federalist, quote, there was a study commissioned by The Guardian of the UK in 2004. It reviewed 100 studies and found 20% of people regret it. Considering the findings of a 2011 Swedish study published seven years after the 2004 UK review, it looked at the mortality and morbidity. After gender reassignment surgery, it found people who changed genders had a higher risk of suicide. In that study, all the, ex the sex reassigned persons in Sweden from 1973 to 2003, that's 191 male to females, 133 female to males, were compared to a comparable random group. The sex reassigned persons had substantially higher rates of death from cardiovascular disease and suicide, substantially higher rates of attempted suicide. Gender surgery is not effective treatment and depre or for depression, anxiety, or mental disorders. And by the way, folks, Jenner showed early signs of regret. Remember that Vanity Fair piece? He was on the cover of Vanity Fair looking all purdy. Well, here's what it actually said in that Vanity Fair piece. It's a direct quote from the piece. Quote, Caitlin went into the long hallway and paced back and forth on the dark wood floor where not even the footsteps made a sound. The panic attack lasted about 15 seconds, but a single thought continued to course through her mind. Quote, what did I just do? What did I just do to myself? A counselor from the L.A. Gender Center came over to the house so Caitlin could talk to someone with professional expertise. The counselor helped ease her mind. She said such reactions were often induced by the pain medication. <laughs> she also said such second guessing was human and temporary. The thought has since passed and has not come back. There's no buyer's remorse. This is from Vanity Fair. Not that it matters anyway, because there's no turning back. All right, so Caitlyn Jenner can't switch back because the media would have a field day and make Caitlyn Jenner out to be some sort of sex traitor to, fem to femalehood or something. The media and the Obama administration have a narrative. Sex doesn't exist, but it does exist, and it isn't malleable. Caitlyn Jenner was always a man, no matter what he chose to call himself. If the media force him into a lifetime of suffering just to double down on their own cruelty, his suffering is at least partially on them. I'm Ben Shapiro. This is the Ben Shapiro. Kaylin, Kaylin.